These days, it's safe to assume that the craziest stunts and sequences are made possible with plenty of green screen or CG artistry. But when a director and crew are committed to realism, or there simply is no way to fake a shot, there's no limit to the work they'll put in to get the job done. Here are Screen Man's incredibly hard to shoot movie scenes. Spider-Man Peter first discovers his superpowers in a high school cafeteria, in a sequence the studio actually wanted to cut in order to stay on schedule. Raimi insisted it was needed for the origin story and went on to film a 16 hour day. Using his heightened senses to catch Mary Jane and the contents of her lunch one item at a time, audiences assumed some trickery was at play. But the actor really did pull off the trick for real, aided by some glue to keep his hands stuck to the tray. Kill Bill With his first Kill Bill, director Quentin Tarantino tried something especially ambitious. Most long takes follow behind or in front of an actor, but the film's nightclub sequence flew around, under, over, and through the set, laying out the environment and character locations. With so many wide angles and precisely timed moments, it took over six hours of rehearsals before the cameras could roll. After the 17th take, veteran Steadicam operator Larry McConkey apparently collapsed from exhaustion. What's most impressive about the shot is that unlike other long takes, Tarantino put the sights and sounds of the entire set in the spotlight, barely thinking about the camera capturing the footage or the person behind it. Saving Private Ryan Recreating the D-Day assault on Omaha Beach meant outfitting an army of 1,500 extras, including 1,000 Irish soldiers and countless hours of preparation. Entire days were spent to make single shots possible, with Spielberg using the action, not storyboards, to pick his angles on set. The tremendous effort put into the half-hour sequence paid off, earning Spielberg the US military's high civilian honor. Saving Private Ryan is seen by many as the most realistic recreation of the war ever seen on film. Iron Man 3 but When Iron Man 3 called for the hero to rescue a dozen free-falling Air Force One passengers, someone decided to give the Red Bull skydiving team a call. The veteran adrenaline junkies didn't disappoint, and agreed that even if the backgrounds would be changed in post-production, strapping cameras to skydivers and capturing actual skydives would be worth it in the end. The team spent a week jumping continuously without goggles, wearing parachutes hidden under their costumes that can still be spotted in a few shots. Just to drive home the point, when the characters are scrambling to link hands or fall in formation, the audience is seeing what actually took place thousands of feet in the air. Lord of the Rings The director wanted to film real models, real actors, and real scenes as much as possible. To do it, the filmmakers turned to some old school tricks, using forced perspective, not computers, to shrink or enlarge their stars. By placing Frodo much farther away from the lens than Gandalf, audiences were instantly fooled. But when the two were forced to interact inside Frodo's home, the crew had to pioneer a brand new approach. Even a small pan of the camera from side to side meant moving one of the actors along with it, sliding Sir Ian McKellen in front of the lens and shifting parts of the set just to maintain the illusion. Seeing how the shots were constructed is still hard to believe, but the award-winning results and realistic feel speak for themselves. Apollo 13 When he began work on his tale of a failed mission to the moon, director Ron Howard expected to shoot the movie's zero-g sequences like usual, by faking it. But to give his cast an idea of what weightlessness would really feel like, he scheduled them a trip on NASA's Vomit Car. By flying quickly to cruising altitude before dropping the plane into a steep dive, passengers on board are rendered essentially weightless. One trip was all it took for Howard to change his mind convincing NASA to let him build sets inside the plane and film his weightless sequences during each one of the comet's 25 second dives. His stars rose to the challenge, enduring 60 to 80 dives a day for a total of 612, but it was worth it in the end, even if the zero-g action is taking place a bit closer to Earth than the original mission. Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol The franchise returned to the top of the box office, thanks in large part to one incredible sequence set inside and outside Abu Dhabi's Burj Khalifa Hotel, the largest building in the world. The script called for IMF agent Ethan Hunt to climb, run, and swing along the hotel's glass exterior, with Tom Cruise performing the stunts himself. The crew built a replica section of the building to prepare special rigs, harnesses, and equipment ahead of time, before filming on the real building. 
That included a rig that would allow the director and cameraman to lie facing out from the building in order to watch crews run towards them, leap over, and continue down with the camera catching every second. The finished scene was a total success, even if the studio had to change insurance companies to make it possible. Cliffhanger The movie's most memorable stunt isn't set on any cliff, but thousands of feet above them when one of the villains slides down a rope from one plane to another. There's no trickery to the shot, only stuntman Simon Crane performing it exactly as it appears, 15,000 feet above the ground. The studio refused to encourage or pay for such a dangerous stunt, meaning Sylvester Stallone offered to cover the costs out of his own pay. After months of preparation and calculating the proper altitude and speed for Crane to survive, he made it down the line to the waiting door and crew. But a burst of turbulence sent him over the plane's body, forcing him to detach and parachute down. It was close enough for the finished movie, and the stuntman walked away with his life. And a world record. He received a cool million dollars for a single scene. The Abyss in the underwater adventure The Abyss, director James Cameron knew there was no easy way to bring his vision of a drilling rig on the ocean floor to life. Building the sets in a 7 million gallon structure, the demands of filming meant scenes needed to be shot at night, in heavily chlorinated water. With the cast forced to spend hours underwater, diving without oxygen, and fleeing from flooding rooms and hallways, some emotional breakdowns were widely reported, particularly after star Ed Harris's near-drowning scare. The one thing keeping the actors from revolting was Cameron's commitment to enduring just as much strain, reviewing footage in a decompression chamber after spending the entire day in a diving helmet. The fact that almost half of the film was captured below the surface means fans can take their pick of stressful, risky, or downright dangerous scenes. So what do you think of our list? Did we miss any truly challenging movie scenes? Let us know in our comment section and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one.